the November update came out with the DAX review. And I wasn't sure if I was going to be a user, but I'm definitely going to be because it's actually quite neat. It's not just creating queries, it does quite a lot more. So let me go through how it works and maybe it will convince you that it's for you too. First of all, it is a preview feature, so you need to turn it on on preview features. Okay, so once you've done that, you will see that it shows here a DAX thing. So if you click on it, the first thing they're going to do is it picks a table. I think it's a random table because it's customers is not the first table that I have. And then it says evaluate top 100. If you click run, then you will see the table. So this would be the equivalent of actually going in here and then going to the customer table and see it, but you will see only the first 100 values which it might not make a lot of sense if you imported the data, but if you're in direct query, then you are able to see your data, which is very, very neat. Um, if we go back, there is a possibility to do the exact same thing. Let's pick, I don't know, uh, categories, for example, and show the top 100 the categories. We don't have 100 categories, but it will show you the same, but it will write all the column names so you can choose what you want to see. So one way you can do to easily select what columns you want to see, you select the column that you don't want to see and then you comment it out and then you run it. And then you can see that it gets removed. If you want it back up, you can just uncomment it and run and then you will get it back up. You can always, you know, this comment is a quite a long shortcut. Uh, I know it with my fingers, not with my head, but now you can actually just go in here and do it. Uh, comment and uncomment a lot easier than before, okay? So that's neat. Something else that you can do that also you can do in Power Query but takes forever is you go to the table and you go to show column statistics and it will give you information if you have blanks, what does it mean, what is the max, a sense if you have new data of how the data looks like and see if you need to fix something. It's actually very, very neat. In Power Query, it takes forever. Here is actually very quick. I haven't tested with like big tables, but anyway, Power Query was slow, even with small tables. So <laughs> note that for everything that you do, it creates a new tab down here. When you save the report, it will save. So you need to make sure that you get rid of them if you don't want them anymore. There is no tab management system still, but yeah. You can, you can remove them fairly quickly, so you just click, 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 and because they are the same size, it's like Google Chrome, right? You will be able to remove them easier. But just remember that they stay there, which is a good thing if you want to keep the queries and work the next day, and you need to remove them if you have too many. What else you can do? You can actually look at these. You can go queries and define all measures in this model. If you go to the model view, you will see all the measures in here, but this will give you, it will run all the measures and it will give them to you in here. So here are the definition for the measures and here is where it's actually evaluating them. So you have a quick way to actually see what measures you have. It's quite neat because you need this before external tool to actually do it. And it's actually doing it by ordering by tables, which is actually quite nice in order to be able to find them. Something that it would be actually quite lovely is if we could see which measures are not being used in the report. There are standard tools that do that, but it would be lovely to be able to do it within Power BI without having to download anything extra. Uh, I don't think it's possible yet, but hopefully they will add it to the DAX query. That would be very, very neat. So for example, in here, like have a star or something that would tell you that, hey, this is um, not being used. So maybe you can delete it. Same with tables though. Something else I want to show you is this. If you this is you know the results for the measure, if you hover over a measure, it will tell you that it will show you how it was created, what the, the actual formula is, which is very, very neat. One thing that I don't like is that they put the table name in front of it. As you know, we have this convention, unspoken or spoken <laughs> convention that a measure, you, don't, you never put the table name in front, you just do it on columns so you can very quickly see. They're not following this here, which I think is a pity. Obviously, if you've done it, for example, here they are listing a measure that I wrote, 
And the table name is not in front, so you can see that this is a measure. You can hover over and it will tell you the definition of it. But here, it doesn't follow the convention. I wish it would, because they're, if you're you know, for new users, they might start doing that, putting the column name in front of a measure, which shouldn't do. But it's a small thing in the big scheme of the math. And hopefully they will change it soon. Okay, let's move on. Let's do something else. Uh, I'm going to go to previous year isolated and do an evaluate. So just run that measure. Again, you can see here all the details in front of a measure. Please get rid of that. And if you hover over, you'll see the definition of the measure. If you click on it, it will show up here a light bulb. And if you click on it, you can do define with reference. So it will tell you how that measure was created. So as you can see, it actually shows you the measures that took to create that specific measure. That is so good because when you have nexted that formulas, it just gets sometimes very hard to understand how they were created. So now it will lay it out for you. So neat. So I want to show you this also. You can actually create the measures on the fly while testing and, you know, trying to create new formulas. So I'm going to copy these and I'm going to say, okay, what would happen instead of sales I get? I'm just sum of sales. Will I get the same results? You can run these. It's complaining that it has the same name. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a comma and we want to see the results. So I'm going to add it to the evaluate. So to run. And I said, oh, I'm not getting the exact same value. What can it be? I can go here to sales, hover over it and see that oh, it has a discount that I don't have if I just do it like that. And then I said, oh, I want to have previous year without discount. So I'm going to keep this. So to keep it, you just go here, update model, confirm and you will get added, you see here, into your model. So that is also very, very neat. So what do you think about the DAX query view? I actually think it's very, very neat and I plan to use it. I really, really like it. They've done a very, very good job. The things, again, that I mentioned through the video are that I would like to see is just measures should never have a table name in front of them. And uh, it will be lovely to be able to see what measures and tables are not used in the actual report, in the visualization. I'm not sure if this semantic model is aware of the visuals. Maybe it is. Another thing that you can do also that I haven't shown you yet is you can use the performer analyzer and it will show you the results in that query. If you want, I can do a separate video about it where you can try it by yourself. But all in all, this must be probably my favorite update of the year, to be fair. So if you try it, let me know what you think. If you have any comments or feedback, let the Power BI team know as always. And I will see you again in the next video.